In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from those who are violent, who plan evil things in their minds and stir up wars continually. They make their tongue sharp as snakes and under their lips is the venom of vipers. Guard me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent who have planned my downfall. The arrogant have hidden a trap for me, and with cords they have spread a net. Along the road they have set snares for me. But I say to the Lord, You are my God. Give ear, O Lord, to the voice of my supplications. O Lord, my Lord, my strong deliverer, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further their even, evil plot. Those who surround me lift up their heads. Let the mischief of their lips overwhelm them. Let burning coals fall on them. Let them, if, let them be flung into pits, no more to rise. Do not let the slanderer be established in the land. Let evil speedily hunt down the violent. I know that the Lord maintains the cause of the needy and executes justice for the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name the upright shall live in your presence. Dear sisters and brothers, welcome again in our virtual church at the worship service from Lockerbie Church of Scotland. We open the service with the Psalm 140. And now let us sing the first hymn inviting everything that has breath to praise the Lord. It's number 1001 in the Mission Praise Hymn Book. Everything that, everything that, 
Thank you for joining in our worship service. Today the crowd of those taking part in the service is not as big as last Sunday, but the more they deserve thanks. So I thank David, Rosie, Ava and Anna for singing, Diane for playing keyboards and Rosie for playing flute. And once again, we have great wildlife pictures supplied by Gary Shanks. So thanks for them too. Last week we announced the reopening of the Drivesdale Church from September with first Sunday service on 6th September. And I can confirm now that all Preparation and paperwork has been done thanks to Linda, the church secretary, and Grace, the session clerk, and that the presbytery granted their approval. So I'm delighted to be able to invite you again to Drivesdale Church in Lockerbie from 6th September 2020 onwards. I believe we all can imagine there will be still some safety precautions and restrictions to follow. In short, if you decide to come, please don't forget your face mask. But even if you forget, there will be some uh, for your use. Also, allow yourself enough time before the beginning because we have to keep social distance and at the entrance and also be prepared to leave your name and contact details with the door wardens for the case of virus outbreak. Inside the church we have to sit uh, only downstairs and in two meters distance from one another uh, there are signed uh, places so please uh, sit at the sign, signed uh, place. And unfortunately, sadly, there will be no singing and no coffee afterwards. Also, communion is not possible until further notice. That's why we decided to include communion into the last lockdown online worship service planned for Sunday 30 August next, next week. It's something we could not even imagine a year ago. But of course, church in the last half a year went through a great time of changes and looking for new ways of worshiping the communion being a very important part of our life of faith. Uh, it's good to have a chance. So Church of Scotland officially approved to the online form of communion. We are very aware it is very strange. But unfortunately we live through strange times. So we invite you to take part in the online communion, if you want, next Sunday, 30th August 2020. Of course, it's not a duty if you don't feel comfortable with the idea of the remote communion. Just skip this bit of a video. If you want to participate, please prepare for yourself or your family a slice of bread and a glass of wine or grape juice. 
and then follow the liturgical instructions uh, on the screen. I also want to remind you of the prayers for our sick. Little Tanya with leukemia and Ruby with hip and overall weakness in the hospital. Uh, especially Tanya was or has been doing very well last week until Thursday when she had slightly higher temperature so she had to be admitted to the Dun Dumfries hospital for just for check. And let us hope the temperature will keep to normal and Tanya and her family will be able to return home soon. Let us pray for them. Lord Jesus, thank you for keeping your company for, for both Tanya and Ruby and many other who fell ill. Especially we pray for all those hit by the COVID disease. Lord, touch them all with your healing hand and fill them with your spirit of hope. Let them be all right again and praise you with all their hearts, souls and strength. Let them come back home to their beloved ones. And be with all doctors, nurses, carers, and all the staff who cares about the sick. Amen. And now we'll pray and praise our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we have come to you because in you only we can find words that give us hope, forgiveness and life. We praise you for everything you did for us. You died on the cross for our salvation from sin. You suffered so that we might be freed from condemnation. You raised from dead again so that we could begin new life with you and in you. We thank you for your love. Almighty God, you have taught us that without love all our things are worth nothing. Send us your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts the most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And we pray together as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's listen to the first Bible reading. It's from the first Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 to 18. King Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah's, Elijah has, had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. 
Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life, and he came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tea, tree. He asked that he might die. It's enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. And suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. And then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in, the, in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of, of the cave. And then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. And also you shall, shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, as king, of, o, king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mechola, as prophet in your place. And yet, I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him.
And the second reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13, and then verse 35. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. The Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for those people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. And now there was a great deal of grass in this place. So they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish and as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. These were the words of God. Now we'll sing the hymn, It is well with my soul. Number 757 in the Mission Praise Hymn Book 757. It 
Dear sisters and brothers, we are very much looking forward to a reopening of the church again. After more than five months of very strange life, we are getting quite excited to get back to something resembling normality. But maybe we are asking important question together with many others nowadays. Why should we come back? Why should we come to church at all? Is it so important? What do we expect from being there? I think everyone has to formulate their own answer. So I hope you have your own answer to these questions. But I will try to look if we can find some hints to, to these questions. In the Old Testament story of the prophet Elijah and New Testament story of feeding 5,000. The, chap the Old Testament chapter we have just heard might be the first ever account of depression or at least of burnout in, in the history of mankind. I believe you know the story of Prophet Elijah. If, if not, 
Don't hesitate and read it in the Old Testament first book of the Kings. It's thrilling reading. It seems being a prophet in old Israel was like starring in an action movie. Elijah won his greatest victory. But in the same day, he gets into immediate danger. The mighty queen, a fanatic supporter of his opponents, threaten, threaten him with, with death. And suddenly, he being winner, suddenly he is on the run, on the run for his life. He didn't have any goal. The important thing was to get as far from the queen as possible. And he despaired. He got to the very bottom. He wanted to disappear. After a day's walk, he even prays that the Lord lets him die. Maybe we understand him. Maybe some things sometimes are falling apart. Uh, sometimes we just sit waiting for next disaster or bad news. And we can understand this mood of the God's man. Maybe many of us at some point got to such hopeless state. From the statistics, we know that there are many who never get up again. Elijah wanted to die. He was trying to flee away to the most deserted desert where nobody was, even God. And maybe he was a little angry with God. He was risking his life for him. He won a great victory for his God. But now he is just too tired to plow on. He feels alone and abandoned. We hear it in his final complaint. I'm left alone. Well, this is what despair, this devil's instrument can do. Persuade person that he or she is alone, abandoned and deserted. When we are down, even our best friends feel to be far away, beyond the possibility of helping us. Despair is really lonely business. The first message of this story is that God doesn't abandon us. God goes with us and for us to the very bottom. We can hear it from many biblical stories. For example, Jonah, another biblical suicidal character. And we also can hear it from many testimonies of other people, historical or contemporary. Even when you feel left alone and abandoned, God is with you. But sometimes our flight is so fast that God can't catch up with us until we fall down. Sometimes the run of our life is so hectic and feverish that we don't slow down until our body just fails and can't move anymore. And only then we have time to evaluate our lifestyle, to think about real values of love, hope, truth, and justice. 
God was with Elijah. When the prophet falls, exhausted and terribly lonely, God's angel, God's messenger, that is the, the literal meaning of the word, of the word angel, God's angel brings him bread and water, new strength for his journey. Well, Elijah needed uh, physical strengthening. He needed rest and food. And he got both food and sleep. And twice. We people just need food and rest to be able to carry on. And not only physically, but also psychically and spiritually, we need sustenance and holidays. The material side of this Elijah's sustenance is very interesting. Bread and water. And Christian church from the oldest apostolic times interpreted this as a foretaste of Jesus' sacraments of baptism and communion. The sacraments, together with God's word, are the sustenance for our spiritual journey. We have heard it in the New Testament story. Jesus also strengthens his disciples and followers. He gave them, not sold, but gave, fish and bread, not fish and chips. And he gave them enough. There was enough and more than enough. Uh, there are baskets of food left even for those who might come late. Jesus explains, he himself is the real bread of life, which whoever accepts will not, not lack anything important anymore. So, Similarly, like the disciples, Elijah gathered some strength and some hope. And in the virtue of this food and drink, he walked another 40 days and 40 nights. Just imagine, in despair, he crawled for one day and wanted to die with hope new hope, he ran for 40 days and didn't even realize how far he got. It's hope of God's promises and their palpable representation in the sacraments what keeps us running. Elijah ended deep in the desert, far from people but close to God. God met him in the solitude on the mountain and he listened to the prophet's complaints. There is a noteworthy fact that Elijah <laughs> told God everything but didn't get much answer to, to his question or complaints. And quite often it's like that. It, it helps us just to get the opportunity to pour out our questions, fears or frustrations. It helps just to have someone who listens and the burden is taken down and the spirit lifts up. And paradoxically, Elijah, who had been deadly tired, now gets new tasks to do. And surprisingly, he accepted them without any objection. He was assured in his faith in God, who is with us even in the hardest of times, in our despairs and deserts. But 
Elijah was also assured about the human company. You are not alone. There are still 7,000 faithful souls out there. You might not know them all, but God knows every single one and remembers every single one of them. And they form the God's people, the church. So if we, if we get back to the original question, why should one come to church? The biblical message is double. For one, well, it's not really the church building that we need for our faith. The source and goal of our faith is God and Jesus Christ, our Savior, the one who died for the forgiveness of our sins and who resurrected from dead and carries us with him into his kingdom of love. That's the main thing in our faith. So the building is not the most important part of our faith. But on the other hand, the church building represents God in the lives of individuals and society. And it is a reminder of everything what Jesus has done for us. So it's helpful for, for faith, although it's not the most important part. And second, although our faith is very individual, faith is our own decision and it's between us and God himself. Although faith is very individual, we still need some mutual contact and support of believers. Faith must be shared with others. Otherwise, it's, it's twists and crumples. It's not possible for us to struggle alone. We need fellowship of others. Maybe we don't have 7,000 souls as in Elijah's story. Maybe we don't have 5,000 hungry mouths as in disciples experience. But still we need one another. We need a human sharing and human understanding. We need the fellowship of God's children. And of course, the church is a place where we can find this fellowship with people and strength of the Holy Spirit. The church is a place where the sustenance of word and sacraments is served. So we come to church to meet our God and to be strengthened by his administration. Like Elijah came to the God's mountain and people in the New Testament times were coming to Jesus and they were meeting together with other fellow believers. And they got comfort and encouragement in God's company and in, in the company of fellow believers. So both gives us hope for next days. The fellowship of faith with, with Jesus and fellowship with other Christians. Often things don't go as we would like them. Often things are just falling apart for us. Jesus is our strength in such times. He sustains us and gives us everything we need. Bread and hope. So when we are sad and when we are down, when we feel alone and abandoned, when we despair in depression. Let us come to God for new encouragement and for new tasks, new meaning of life. Amen. 
Now we'll sing the hymn Fight the Good Fight, number 517 in the hymn book. Fight the good fight with all your might. Christ is your strength and Christ your right. Behold on life and it shall be your joy and crown eternally. Run the straight race through God's good grace. Lift up your eyes and seek his face. Life with its way before you rise. Christ is the path and Christ the prize. Cast care aside, be on your guide. His boundless mercy to provide. Trust and your trusting soul shall prove Christ is its life and Christ its love. Faint not nor fear his arms on here. He does not change and you are dear. Only believe and Christ shall be your own and all eternally. Let us pray the prayer of intercession. Listening God, you call us to come to you with our prayers for others. And we do so in a spirit of gratitude for all the ways your grace and mercy fills our lives. We thank you for creation and for all the blessings of this life. And most of all, for your boundless love in the gospel of Jesus Christ, our redeeming presence. Give us a constant awareness of your mercy. Call us to take time to immerse ourselves in your grace. Make us aware of signs and symbols of your love in action. Loving God in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray and to offer petitions to you in his name. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers for others may serve your will. You made all things in your wisdom and in your love. You save us. So we pray for all creation that evil powers might be cast down, that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness might be fed, and that all your children might enjoy in equal measure the fruits of your world. We pray for the Church. Keep us one in faith and service, so that your good news might be proclaimed and so that your love and light might be beacons of hope and purpose in the darkest places. We cannot love you fully unless we love our neighbors as ourselves. So we pray for our enemies and our friends. We pray for all those in need, in body, mind and spirit. We pray for all who suffer from pain and sorrow, especially any known to us whom we think about. God of compassion, bless us and those we love that drawing close to you, we may be drawn closer to each other. And hold us always in communion with the saints of all the ages, especially those dear to us in the one kingdom of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
And now go with the peace of God, with the hope of Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit to fulfill your calling as servants of the Lord. And may the Lord bless you and guard you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. Amen. And we will end with him, It's a World of Sunshine, number 245 in the hymn book. God bless you all. It's a world of sunshine, a world of rain. It's a world of laughter, a world of pain. It's a world we must share, where we must learn to care. For the world belongs to God. This is God's world after all. This is God's world after all. This is God's world after all. Yes, it's God's good world. It's a world of plenty, a world of need. It's a world of love and a world of greed. It's a world we must share, where we must learn to care for the world. To God, this is God's world after all. This is God's world after all. This is God's world after all. Yes, it's God's good world. It's a world of water, a world of drought It's a world of faith and a world of doubt It's a world we must share, where we must learn to care For the world belongs to God This is God's world, huh?